Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 42. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook. Business 210 Chapter 3. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we got to talk about coefficient of variation. We're on the Sheet tab CV. We've been talking about variability, um, range, interquartile range, variance, and uh, standard deviation which is the one we will uh, use most often but there is something called coefficient of variance and let me show you how the textbook uh, shows you how to do it you take your sample standard deviation divided by x bar or sigma divided by mu whatever it is you take the mean divided I'm sorry the uh, standard deviation divided by the mean but look what the textbook does it says multiply by a hundred and then add a percent in my opinion, that is how you do it by hand. You do not want to multiply by 100 when you're doing it in Excel. You just take whatever the standard deviation is, divide by the mean. So we'll come over here. There's three good reasons to use this uh, coefficient of variance. If you have means that are different, like we do here, or standard deviations that are very different, or uh, you have units that are different, right? So this is mean bonus paid per employee, and this is mean years worked, right? So you really can't compare those at all. Three uh, years compared to $755 standard deviation. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Ah, but coefficient of variance will completely uh, give us our results since we're taking standard deviation divided by mean it will give us the amount of standard deviation for every one unit of our mean and it will get rid of the uh, great differences in values and it will also get rid of the units alright uh, equals and we take our standard deviation divided by our mean now I've pre-formatted that as a percent, so we see 38%. Here we get our standard deviation divided by our mean, and we get 20%. There's more variability relative to the mean and the distribution of bonus paid uh, as compared to the distribution of years worked. So more variability than this one, even though everything was different. Now let's look at a stock example. If I can scroll over here, it's up to the near the top of the sheet. All right, coefficient of variance for our stock values. We have stock one return, uh, and then standard deviation on historical returns here. Stock two, standard deviation, the return, stock three, standard deviation three. And we just want to calculate coefficient of variance. This will tell us for every one unit of X bar, what is the standard deviation. I'm going to highlight all these cells and I'm going to say equals standard deviation divided by our X bar. Control enter, those are relative cell references. Ah, so the big one here has the most variability, the most standard deviation uh, per one unit of X bar. So that is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to do the inverse, and not they don't show it in this text, but in a textbook, but in a fine finance class, you would see this. You would say the inverse of it, you take x bar divided by standard deviation equals x bar divided by standard deviation. All relative cell references, control enter. This tells you for every one unit of risk because in the uh, finance class you'll learn that standard deviation is a proxy for risk and so for every one unit of risk what's your return so here's the return for one unit of risk here's the return so for this measure the smaller it is the more risky it is that means for every one unit of risk that's our return here taking the standard deviation divided by X bar we get for every one unit of X bar what's our standard deviation or proxy for risk and so the higher says that that uh, one has the most variation and when you're picking stocks do you want a lot of variations well if you don't want a lot of variation this tells you not to pick that one alright uh, when we come back we'll look at a, a big data set and we'll look at the data analysis add-in see you next video